So today, Corey and I have been cleaning. Um, I clean my house every week. I like to, kind of obsessive about it, but I like to vacuum and mop. I vacuum the whole house. I have a rainbow vacuum cleaner. I've had two vacuum cleaners basically since Matt and I were married. The first rainbow that I had, it was a refurbished one, and maybe we'd been married a year or two when I got it, and I had to make payments on it even though it was refurbished. And I used it for 20 years probably. And then uh, several years ago, it finally died. And I took it to someone to repair it, but it was kind of beyond repair. So I got another one, and it was also refurbished. And I, luckily, by that time, they'd come down in price, and I didn't pay as much for that one so I could buy it. But anyway, that's what kind of rainbow vacuum cleaner is the, the vacuum cleaner that I prefer. So I like to do that once a week. Of course, I clean the bathrooms. I don't dust every week, uh, but I do straighten up. I just feel better if I have a, a neat house. I don't function. It's not really for anybody else. It's for me. My brain does not work unless I feel like everything's kind of in its place. And it's not always like that by no means. But that's kind of what I try to do week to week. But once a year, and I do it at different times, like people think of spring cleaning, but I don't always do it in the spring. I like to take, go to a room and take everything, move it, get behind it, clean the walls, do everything. Uh, really deep clean. Lots of times I do it right after Christmas. It just seems like starting the new year and probably all the years I worked at the college I had like several days after Christmas off and that was always a good time to to get it done so that's usually when I do it um, in the spring like normal spring cleaning I'm too busy wanting to be outside I want to be outside in the garden and thinking about the summer garden so I don't really like to do it then but this year I'm kind of trying to do it before before Christmas gets here just because things have kind of got got pretty messy. I can't remember. I think last year that I did do deep cleaning, but I don't remember when I did it. So I've been going through my house. I've already done my bathroom, mine and Matt's bathroom. I've done the living room and today I'm doing part of the kitchen. I won't do it all. But since Corey was here helping me, I said let's do just even if we just get done taking down what I my little um things that I put up here above the cabinets. Let's just do that. So Corey's helped me do that. We've got that all clean. We've got them all clean. Now I can put them back up there. And that part will be done. So when I do the rest of the kitchen, it'll be, be easier. So my cabinets were not always like this with that ledge up there. They actually, when we were, when we, Matt and Pap, Matt and my dad, I call Pap, they built the cabinets, they built our house. And up there at the top, that was kind of enclosed in paneling. It was just paneled over. And it was like that for several years. And my cabinets were just birch plywood. That's what they made them out of. And at some point I wanted to paint them. And then I also wanted that part removed so that I could set stuff up there. Actually, Nana and Papa, they got this new cabinet back then in their in their dining room that went on the wall. It was kind of like to be used like a china cabinet, but on the top, Nana put all this beautiful stuff, and that's what's made me start wanting mine to be like that. Well, Matt finally listened, listened to all my begging, and he took the cabinets off the wall and cut that part off and then put them back on the wall. It was, it was a real job. And I don't regret doing that part, even though a lot of people tell me, you know, if you put something up there, then you got to worry about getting it down to clean it. And because it's in a kitchen, your the food you cook and all that kind of kind of gets on it, whether you have a, a hood range or not. But I've not never regretted that. I do regret sometimes painting my cabinets. I kind of wish they were that blonde birch looking wood, but but that's too late too. Anyway, but that's how I ended up with that space up there. Well, once I did, of course, I wanted to figure out what to put up there. And I started, just because some of them I already had, um, and some of them I just wanted more of, I started collecting pictures. So like this is probably one of the first ones that I had. This is really heavy, and I really love it. This was Matt's parents when they were first married. And I have some of the, actually the glasses that went with it, and the little, there's like a, a two different sizes of glasses, and then also like a little dessert cup. So I really love them. So that was one of the first ones that I that I had to put up there. Then, also for Matt's family, Miss Cindy, she was so kind to me. She shared Matt's mother, her grandmother, Dolly, some of her things that Miss Cindy had. Well, here's two of them. And it's like depression glass pictures. They're so lovely. And I actually have some of the, a few of the glasses. I don't use the glasses. I have them put up. But so I had these two. 
and I really love earth tones. Those are my favorite. So the greens and the browns, that's just something I really love. Another one Miss Cindy gave me, just because once she seen what I had going on, she knew that I would like, and this was just hers, uh, one that she had. I've actually used this one before. I've actually used the big depression glass one too before, but this was another one that Miss Cindy um, gifted me. She didn't buy it, she had it, but another one. And I loved the silver, uh, how it complemented the other earth tones. Some of them, like this one, this little blue one, and I have some other ones over in other parts of my kitchen, but I found, I got to where every time I went to a thrift store or a little antique store or a yard sale, I would look for pictures. So this is one that come from, from a place in Murphy. I don't even think the place is there anymore. It was downtown Murphy. But as soon as I seen that blue, I thought, oh, that would just be the perfect pot, pop of color. So I really like that one. And I probably, it's got some bad places in the bottom. I think someone actually used it on the stove. That one's almost burnt all the way through. But I really like it, and I've had it for for a long time. And I probably, I don't know, I probably paid $2 for it or $3 or something like that. So not very expensive, but just one that I like a lot. Some other pictures here that I have. I have two kind of a teapot and a pitcher that's kind of the exact same, same style. <laughs> and these I've had probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years, something like that. And they still have the price sticker on the bottom. This one was $3, but they just come from Dollar General. I just seen them on the shelf and liked them, and I you know, wouldn't let myself spend much money on them. But I just loved the color of them again and thought they would fit in with my, with my other ones. Now, this one last picture that I'll share with you, it is really pretty, really beautiful. It's probably one of my favorites, and it has a really great story with it. So when the girls were probably, I don't know, maybe they were six, seven years old, something like that, one of my friends had a daughter that was exactly their age, so they were friends, of course, and anyway, the friend was having a party, like a, it wasn't really home interior, but something like that, you know, so of course we went, and the girls went, and we had a good time, and I really enjoyed ourselves. M money was really tight in those days. So I loved this. This was like one of the ones the hostess had, the one that gave the little party, and so she showed it. So you, we passed it around, and I was like, oh, those colors, you know, they're just beautiful. So I really went on about it, but I knew I couldn't afford to buy it, so I didn't. Uh, when I would go to things like that in those days, I felt like I had, I wanted to buy something to support the person that was giving the party, but I generally would pick one of the cheapest things in the, in the book. You know, that's really all I could do. So I really loved it though, but I didn't, you know, I loved it, but I didn't, wasn't upset about not having it or anything like that. Well, probably a week went by or something and a different friend, her mother was there and um, a lot of the other people that went to our church at that time and her mother bought me this uh, just because she seen that it pleased me. It about makes me tear up thinking about it. And she knew that I was, Matt and I was, you know, young, married with twins and, and that times were hard and she bought it for me and she gave it to me like a week later or something and said, I just really wanted you to have that. I just wanted to do something kind for you. So that one's very special to me. Uh, and her name is Hazel. So it does make me uh, a little teary eyed, but all the years because she gifted me this when she knew I couldn't afford it, I've enjoyed it being in my kitchen and I still adore it. And it does make it even better since it has the um, connection to, to Hazel, has that great story of her buying it for me. Now, along with all of my pictures, I'll, over the years, I've also put other things up, up there. These old, I bet you've seen these before, these old kind of um, canisters. Granny used these when I was a girl. The lids are kind of cracked on them. She would put like maybe coffee in one and tea in one, something like that. And I used to have tea in this one too when I when I was still drinking a lot of sweet tea before I had to quit. But uh, she gifted them to me after I was married. And I used them a little bit, but then once I had my cabinets like that, I thought, well, they'd be really pretty up there. So those two are from Granny and they end up end up being up there 
along with the pictures. And Granny also, to match that one, she said, well, you need to have this too. So she gave me this one. And I've used it before. I have a smaller one, like smaller diameter up here that Granny again gave me. She's like, yeah, that's your color now. So she'd look out for me. And if she come across these at a thrift store or flea market or something like that, she would get them. But I've used it to put stuff in, especially nice at Christmas or Thanksgiving or something to use for a serving, kind of a serving dish. Another one that I really like, come from Miss Cindy, Matt's mother, is this one. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got this really pretty, like, design on it. It's really, and that's my color. I love it. She used to have this sitting at her house in Black Mountain on her little, her little counter, and I always loved it. And once she moved here, she let me have it. And it's, I'm not, I don't know much about antiques or anything like that, but on the bottom it's got USA and then it's got 604. So I'm wondering if there was only that many of them made. That may not be right, but anyway, I really like that one. This is one of the, I have a few newer things. Most of them are old, but this is one of the newer ones. And Miss Cindy found this. Um, I think she found it at the dump store. Do you have a dump store? So at our local dump, there's a little place there where if something's really nice, you can put it in there and then other people can maybe take it home and that way it keeps it out of the trash. And I think that's where this one come from, but it's handmade. It has the person who, who made it, their initial on the bottom. So it's really lovely. And again, I've used it to serve out of. So I, I love it for, for that reason. This is one of my one of my newer ones too. I've only had it um, probably I don't know how long I've had it. Maybe two Christmases or something like that. Austin's family, Corey's husband Austin, his family sent it to me, and it's um, it's because it's wet inside. It's kind of got vapor locked. We need to dry it out better. But it's just kind of like you could put cookies in there or whatever. But it's really lovely with the with the metal and then it sits in this little metal tray. So I really like it. And I love now that I have a, a piece of Austin's family too. So that was that's one of the newer ones. I've probably had about two years. So this is one of the one of my old ones too. I'll try to hold it up close and see if you can see with the glare all the little little things that's on it. This is just a cake plate and it's really cheap metal, but Granny had it when I was growing up and of course she used it as a cake plate. She would put a just a regular plate in the inside and then use this cover and I just, I loved it when I was little. I'd love to look at those little people and of course I loved the cake that was in it too. Um, it says cake right there on that little sign. It's like a grandma and a little girl. Uh, and then it looks like a little sailor boy. Of course, it's got a little dog and got his food. Anyway, I just really liked it. And sometime, probably, you know, after Matt had done this, but I've had this a long time now, but I was down at Granny's and I was looking for something else. Maybe she'd even asked me to get under the cabinets and look for something. And I seen this and I got so excited because I hadn't seen it in so many years. I forgot about it. So I was like, oh, oh my goodness. I remember that. Can I have it? And she said, yes, you can have it. Take it home. So she gave it to me. So I just love it. Uh, got all those childhood memories attached to it. And then I just love the little scenes too that it shows. And the top's nice because it's got like a little wooden knob and then got uh, the flowers and leaves around it. So I, that's one of my favorites. This is one of my, this big bowl, it's heavy. And this is handmade and it has a mark, but it doesn't have a name. But this is one of my newer ones too. From my last job that I left, when I left, this was my, my uh, office mates and my boss that I worked with. They gifted me this, it was very, very nice of them. So it's just lovely, it's really pretty, handmade, all those wonderful painted, it's just beautiful. So that's one of my newer ones too. And probably my most, the new one, new to me, it's not new, but the newest one to me is this, this little soup terrain. It's got the, got the lid, got this wonderful little um, white ladle. It's, it's really well made, really lovely. So the story with it is that many years ago when I was still, um, stay-at-home mom, but once Corey and Katie got to a certain age, once they went to school, I started like cleaning people's houses. I would do that because then I could, uh, you know, if you cleaned, the people that I cleaned with were so nice. If I said a girl's sick, I can't come today, or there's a field trip, could I switch my days? 
they were always just wonderful to me with that. So during that time, I began cleaning house for a dear lady, Glenda Bell in Hayesville. I really can't remember how I met Glenda. I think it was to do with poetry. She's a wonderful poet. Katie was a little poet in those days. She still is. Katie's one of those people, if she just walked in and I said, Tell, make up something about a dog, she could just come up with this whole thing just off the top of her head. But she was really into writing poems. And the um, North Carolina Writers Network, I'm probably saying that wrong, but anyway, in this area, they really encouraged that. So I think that's how I met Katie, because one time they, I mean, met Glenda because of Katie. One time they invited us to come, and Katie got to stand up and read some of her poems. But anyway, I started cleaning house for Glenda. And I, I helped her with all kinds of things. For many years, I did that until I decided I was going to go back to college. And I think I still did for a little bit after that. But once I took a job, a full-time job at the college, of course, I, I couldn't help her anymore. But we remained friends, good friends. And um, then at some point, I seen, because she's, she's a blogger, so she still sends out, you know, blogs. And I, I read and seen that she needed help. She needed some help. So Corey at that time was needing a, a, like a little part-time job. So I wrote her and I said, Glenda, I think Corey could help you. So she said, okay. So I set that up. So Corey got to help her. And Corey helped her for a couple of years, just do various things, whether it was cleaning house or running errands or doing whatever, whatever she needed to be done. And then eventually Corey had to quit too. Well, in the last year, Glenda has decided that she's going to downsize her house um, and, and when I first met Glenda, her husband Barry was still living and, and he was wonderful to me too. They both just treated me like I was their daughter or something. Um, so good to me, but he passed away during that time that I worked for Glenda. Anyway, all these years later, she's decided she's going to downsize and she's going to move to, to live with one of her sisters. They fixed her up a place in, in their basement. It's real nice. And because of that, of course, she's got to downsize and get rid of a lot of her stuff. So she contacted me and Corey, so kind and nice, and said that she wanted us to come. And she thought since Corey had just started out in her life with Austin, that she might want some of her nicer things. And so we went and we had a wonderful meal. We went out to eat together and then we went back to her house and went through the stuff that she was so kind to share with Corey. But this was sitting there and she said she didn't know what she was going to do with it. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, that is a soup terrain that Barry and I got when we were first married. That was one of our wedding gifts. I was like, you're going to get rid of it? And she said, yeah. And I said, can I have it, please? So she said, well, of course. She said, I would love for you to have it. Know someone that I know personally have a relationship would continue to use it and love it. So that's where that one come from. And I'm so excited next week, Thanksgiving. Uh, when you see this, it may actually be the week of Thanksgiving, so depending on that, I'm going to use it for my Russian tea. I'm going to put Russian tea in it, warm it up just before people get here, and we're going to drink our Russian tea out of it. So I'm very excited about that. And eventually, I'm sure I'll use it for soup too. So that's the story about that one. The only other thing I've got up here that I, I didn't show you is just a, a, a glass cut bowl with the little feet. And this, this come from my Uncle Woodrow and Aunt Faye. And I actually store it inside my cake plate there. And again, I might use it at Christmas or Thanksgiving to put little cookies or something like that in it. And I love it because it's those memories. So if you watch my videos, you already know I'm a truly sentimental person. Um, and I, there's like a couple of reasons why I like the old stuff. Certainly the sentimental, like whether it's that that was my uncle and aunts, you know, that I dearly loved. These were grannies that I used to actually open to get stuff out of when I was a girl. Uh, the beautiful soup terrain that Glenda has shared with me that was part of her wonderful life with Barry. All those kind of things mean so much to me. But also, I just find that old things like that seem like they're made better. Maybe that's just me, or, you know, or maybe that's the price range that I can afford. But it just seems like they're so much better made than uh, today's mask mass kind of produce things and again that's just my personal opinion that may not be true for everything but i hope you enjoyed hearing all these stories and um and hearing why they're special to me and why i have them i've had a few people ask me um, i did a series and I've, i wanted to continue it i'm not really finished with it but i've just kind of we got sidetracked onto other videos but i did a little series about my favorite things in the kitchen 
And on them, several people said, Tipper, why don't you tell about all that stuff that's above your head when you're cooking that we can see? So, so now I have. I've shared the stories of that, and I sure hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia, and hopefully I'll be able to tell you more stories about the area, the region, and my life.